This news update is brought to you by... From rom-coms to dramatic tearjerkers and hit action movies, video on demand from Flo's got what you need, baby. Spend some wee time tonight. Oh, yeah. Simply press the VOD button on your Flow remote. This is how we do TV. This is how we flow. It's Monday, February the 1st, 2016, and this is your Barbados Today Morning News Update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. In our top story, Jamaicans will go to the polls on February the 25th to elect a new government. Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller made the announcement during an hour-long address at the People's National Party mass rally in Halfway Tree St. Andrew late last night. Nomination Day is set for Tuesday, February the 9th. This will be the country's 17th general election since universal adult suffrage in 1944 and the PNP leader's second time making the announcement. During the noisy rally attended by thousands of supporters, the Prime Minister also called for a violence-free election. When there's respect, our children will not be abused, raped, and murdered. There will be greater respect for the sacredness of life. I want everyone to listen to me carefully now. I don't want to care about any disrespect or violence in Barbados, the National Union of Public Workers is awaiting word from Minister of Tourism and International Transport Richard Sealy on management of the Grantly Adams International Airport before making its next move in its pay dispute with the airport authorities. The union staged a brief strike last Friday in the car park of the airport to send a message to authorities that they mean business. A source in the union tells Barbados today they were now awaiting response to its latest letter, insisting that the workers who have been owed the back pay for the past five years must be paid. Minister Richard Seeley is holding a news conference this morning and the airport dispute will most likely be addressed. Government Senator Verla de Pisa has dismissed opposition claims that the Royal Barbados Police Force are being given unconstitutional powers under the amended Domestic Violence Act recently debated in the House of Assembly. De Pisa, who is a practicing attorney at law, was addressing the St. Peter branch of her ruling Democratic Labour Party at the All Saints Resource Centre last night. The PISA contends that under the Criminal Arrestable Offences Act and the Police Act, which are considered constitutional, the police already have the right to arrest persons on suspicion that they would commit an offence. She said the police do not have to wait for anyone to commit an offence for that person to be arrested. The attorney said a person only has to look like they are about to commit a crime and they can be arrested. The Tourism Development Corporation, TDC, which last year funded close to $1 million worth in projects, is again looking to finance new ones this year. Newly elected chairman Martin Ince tells Barbados today that the projects could be small to large ones, which either promote this island or improve the existing destination. Uh, one of the projects that we have uh, that has just got approval is the funding of the of the uh, 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 refurbishment of a lot of the monuments around Barbados. There are many monuments that have slipped into to, to a state of disrepair. We're working closely with the Ministry of Culture and, and specifically where the monuments are located, not only to improve the physical appearance, but also to tell the story of what is the significance or the relevance of that specific monument. It's said that about 40 monuments have been identified for upgrade, including the one at Whole Town, which recognizes the first settlers to Barbados and the first drinking water that ran in Bridgetown. The TDC chairman also revealed that last week his organization approved about $100,000 to help fund the National Trust project to revive the historic Morgan Lewis Windmill as a major heritage landmark and tourist attraction. I think their long-term goal is to, is to grind sugar a couple of times per year, which is a huge hit, you know, with the visitors to the island. You know, suddenly they get four or five hundred people turning up there when they're spinning the mill. I've been on a couple of occasions and it is just magnificent, you know, just the size of the, of, of the, the, the um, uh, 
Goodwin Mill and what have you turning, it's, it's very, very impressive. And Barbados has the last one in this hemisphere. In sports now, Shamar Springer struck a stunning 100 as the West Indies on the 19th clobbered Minnows Fiji on the 19th by 262 runs in Chittagong yesterday to pick up their first victory of the Under-19 Cricket World Cup. Sent into bat, West Indies stormed to 340 for 7 off their 50 overs, with Springer blasting 106 off just 78 balls and in form opener Gidron Pope stroking 76 and Jid Guli a breezy 66. Seema Kakaka Tekaisuva finished with 6 for 59 from his 10 overs. In reply, Fiji could only muster a paltry 78 of 27.3 overs with Pini Vuniwaka top scoring with 29 to be one of just two batsmen to make it into double figures. There's regional and international news after this short break. Turning now to news from the region, the Jamaica government has announced its decision to spend half billion dollars to tackle the Zika virus. Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller told her People's National Party mass rally last night that there must be a greater urgency in fighting the spread of the virus. She told Jamaicans that it is their personal responsibility to play their part of preventing the spread of the Zika virus by keeping their surroundings clean. She said her Minister of Health will today provide a full update to the nation on the Zika virus situation in the country, days after it, recovered, it recorded its first case of the mosquito-borne illness. Simpson Miller said she will also address the nation on the issue tomorrow. In Trinidad, health authorities are saying that their decision to declare a public health emergency in relation to the virus was justified. The announcement comes 24 hours after Health Minister Terence Dialsing declared a public health emergency because of the Zika virus. Because the reaction to the Zika virus cannot be a proportionate reaction. It has to be a disproportionate one because of what we don't know. And that is why I took the measure to declare a public health emergency. The fact that it is now in Jamaica seems to tell me that the decision that we took yesterday when we did not have this information is in fact the correct decision. Minister Dial Singh says there are concerns of the influx of visitors coming into the country for carnival. He says as a short-term measure, he's called for spraying of all carnival venues to minimize the impact of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Meanwhile, cruise lines have begun waiving cancellation penalties for some customers booked on voyages to the Caribbean and other regions affected by the Zika virus. Industry giant Carnival Cruise Line said it will allow pregnant women on sailings that include stops in the U.S. Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico and other destinations impacted by the virus to switch to an itinerary to an unaffected area. Alternately, passengers can postpone their trip or cancel outright and receive a future cruise credit. Norwegian Cruise Line is also allowing pregnant women sailing to affected areas to postpone trips to a later date or switch itineraries. And Royal Caribbean is also giving pregnant women alternative options. On the international scene, the EU's Police Intelligence Unit says more than 10,000 migrant children may have disappeared after arriving in Europe over the past two years. Europol said thousands of vulnerable minors had vanished after registering with state authorities. 
It warned of children and young people being forced into sexual exploitation and slavery by criminal gangs. Save the Children organization says some 26,000 child migrants arrived in Europe last year without any family. And on that note, we end our Barbados Today morning news update. However, you can join us again this afternoon. Until then, remember to log on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also tune into Channel 101 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM to get all the latest news and sports. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.